Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. Been a real busy day, got a lot of calls today. The springtime's picking up and starting to get a lot of phone calls and a lot of new customers, which is a good thing. But I wanted to talk about something today that I think can maybe help you and encourage you if you're in the lawn care business. And it has to do with a comment I received on my YouTube channel recently. And I thought I would sort of elaborate on that and pass it on and something that's going to be applicable for us in the lawn care industry. So let's talk about it. So I try to engage people in the comments on the YouTube channel. That's sort of part of the, the whole idea of having a channel. You ask people to leave comments, you want to engage them. I benefit greatly from the comments, but also part of it is you're going to get some constructive criticism, which is okay, and then occasionally you get some harsh comments that are unacceptable and you have to delete those. But recently I got one that I just don't even know exactly how to classify it. And so I thought I would share it and then how it's going to apply to our line care business. So the comment went something like this. Uh, I don't remember exactly what video it was, it was commented on, but the commenter said something along the lines of, I'm sorry, man, but I cannot handle your southern accent. Um, and, he, and then he went on and elaborated saying that I'm from this part of the country and I've actually worked on my accent so that nobody can tell where I'm from and you know done some things to sound more professional or whatever. I, and I tell you, it, it really caught me off guard because uh, it's one thing to think somebody has a southern accent or a, a British accent, Australian accent, Hispanic accent, I mean, you, whatever kind of accent. It's one thing to, to acknowledge they have that, but to feel like that you need to come out and address that in the comment section on the YouTube is, is really bizarre in my opinion. So how does it apply to your lawn care business? You know, I think one thing that can be a big mistake for people that are starting out in the lawn business or people that's been in a while, you just you sit there and you compare yourself to others. But whether it be positively to make yourself feel better, like this guy saying your accent's not good, I've worked on mine, and thus I'm superior to you, you should probably learn from me and become a better accent person like me. Uh, and so he feels better about himself. He was able to sort of put me down in a way and made himself look better. And you know, and I don't, I didn't take it as constructive criticism. I took it exactly the way I just said it. That he was, he feels better about himself, and because he was able to, to you know, insult me in a way. But if we do that in the lawn care business, to where we're constantly comparing ourselves with others and say, "Look at me, my my uh, lawn business is better than this guy's lawn business, or worse than his lawn business, or I've got more customers or less customers, or better equipment or not as good equipment," uh, or feeling sorry for ourselves because you know where we are, or being boastfully prideful and where we are because look at how superior I am. I mean, you see guys on both ends of the spectrum, those that have made it and are very successful and they're so arrogant that you can't be around them. And then those that struggle and they seem like they just, it really, you know, leads to a, a depression and insecurity and they just really struggle with where their business at in a particular given time. Now, what I'm not saying is you don't evaluate your circumstances and think, how can I improve? How can I adapt? How can I adjust? So imagine I got on here on YouTube and we were going to talk about zero turn lawnmowers and I said something like this. Uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, today we're going to, uh, I think we're going to talk about some um, some uh, zero turn, you know, those uh, the mowers with the handlebars and less, um, you know, so I'm going to give you my opinion on them there. Uh, lawnmowers with the zero turn, you know, that turn on a dime like that. Yeah, we're going to talk, you know, if that was my the way I spoke, then obviously I need to develop and grow and, and become better and all that stuff. But if I sat here and every time evaluated every move I make because some commenter um, says something, then, you know, I, I think, well, I need to go have some sort of plastic surgery procedure. I, I need to probably look at what kind of fashion statements the Kardashians are making so I can make sure I'm in and all that. You know, I just think you're a lot more happy as a human if you just accept who you are. And the same thing on your business. You need, a, yes, you wanna try to grow, you wanna try to improve. But, you know, people ask me sometimes, they say, hey, Jason, can I start a lawn business with just a push mower, just with a riding garden tractor? And my answer is, of course you can. You can start with whatever you got and go and grow and try to upgrade your equipment as soon as you can, but go out there and be the best you can with what you've got 
and then grow it from there and be proud of what you got if that's 10 customers you're mowing part-time or if that's a thousand customers that you've got multiple crews and making multi millions of dollars then embrace it and be thankful to where you are and yes try to improve but ultimately if you're always constantly comparing yourself to other people and thinking that you're better than them or you don't measure up to them it leads to very unhappy lifestyle I don't understand how you could possibly be happy if you're constantly comparing yourself to others so let me hear from you is this something you struggle with do you are you insecure are you struggle with the way your business is at the current moment and always comparing yourself to others and I want to share with you one other thing that happened today that it was interesting and y'all tell me what you think about this I had a situation you know sometimes I don't know if what I do crosses some professional code of conduct or not but here's what I did today I, I got a lot of calls today and I was given quotes and I got one that I just I did not have a good feeling about okay and they had been using a previous company that is a reputable company in my area and I, I asked them I said you know why did you uh, what happened with the other company why did y'all cancel with them and the answer I got just did not satisfy me it sounded fishy to me and I just wanted to, to research this and because I, I, you know how there's some customers out there and this is a demographic of people that are company hoppers. They, they switch companies every year and, and you know, you're never going to make them happy. And I just, be honest with you, would rather not deal with those people. I want some long-term relationships with these customers. So I'm trying to figure out if that's what this person is. So here's what I did. I called the other company because the yard sign was still in the yard and I called him. I said, hey, um, you know, I've just got a, a new customer uh, that I've given a quote to on, and I was just checking with you to see, you know, if you, if y'all had had them as, as a previous customer and if, um, if you could inform me if they paid their bill on time and that sort of thing. And the lady answered the phone, you know, was friendly to me at least to some degree. And she said, yes, they, they are a previous uh, customer of ours, but I can't really relay any more information to you about them. And so he ended the conversation. I was able to actually get a positive answer for somebody else and look forward to moving forward to, with the customer. But what do y'all think? Is that, uh, have you ever called a competitor to ask about a customer? I just, I took that on my own initiative and maybe, uh, I don't know if the other person couldn't tell me something because they felt legally they couldn't do so or if they just thought that was some kind of competitive information that they didn't want to share. Tell me your thoughts on that. Is that kind of crossing the line? what I did because uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. I just was trying to find out uh, if this customer was a customer that was gonna be worth taking on or not, if they're one that just changes companies every year and sometimes even not paying their bill. Final encouragement to you on the video is springtime's here, uh, at least while I'm shooting this video. You need to take advantage of the spring if you're trying to grow your business. It's by far the best time, in my opinion, to get new customers, uh, at least here in the South. So take advantage. I know, I know it can be some long, tiring days, but make yourself get out there and do what you're gonna do. If you've got a marketing budget, if you're gonna use some marketing strategies, I would encourage you to do them during the spring because they just don't work as well other times of year. I will say it's, you can pick up customers in the summer and it, and there's a lot of marketing going on in the spring so sometimes in the summer there's less people marketing so you can have some success then as well but uh, overall spring is by far my best time to get customers and just sort of persevere go through these next few months of springtime because this is your best chance to grow your business and pick up a lot of customers that can really increase your bottom line for the rest of the year thanks for watching the video let me hear from you on the topics we discussed today about me calling the competitor and about just the insecurities you deal with in your business whether you're comparing yourself to others or not and whether you think i need to go have some sort of voice lessons or whatever to de-accent myself Talk to you guys later. I'm Jason Creel. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you later. Bye.